Hi, this is Miss Litton, and this is my wonderful Period 1 AP Bio class. Say hi. Hi. Yes. It doesn't say the page number. Oh, I'll help you with that. Um, so we already discussed the introduction. So this is the first lab, and this is reviewing the tools of the genetic engineer, um, learning how to use the micropipetter, which you're already familiar with from last time, and um, the steps of gel electrophoresis. So the first thing I want to remind us of is how to use the micropipetter. Okay, and there is a first stop and a second stop. And I'm just going to hold one up here in my hand so you can see. Remember, you can set the dial on the sides to whatever you want it to be. In this case, in the white ones, there is a decimal. So you could set it at 2.5 or whatever you wanted to see. If there's not a, um, a decimal, if it's on the vertical like this, the last number is considered to be the decimal. It's usually in a different color, okay? So you can adjust this. Do not go above or below the range that's on here. In fact, these say they go down to 0.5, don't. Don't go lower than one, and you don't have any drops that you need to do lower than one anyway, okay? So um, when you hold it, remember you can hold it with your left hand or your right hand, okay? It still works, okay? And um, one of the first things about the, the plunger I want you to rem remember is when you push down to that first stop, and listen, you can hear it, right? When you push down to that first stop, you're pushing out a measured volume of air, okay? And then you're gonna go into your solution, and when you release it slowly, you're sucking up that much fluid of, to replace the air that you just pushed out. Keep in mind, your amount of your solutions are so small that when you go in there, you have to sometimes chase the water level down. Are you with me on that? Otherwise, you'll suck up what instead? Air. You have to see the solution go into the tip. That's why you hold the tube. Nobody holds it for you. You hold the micropipetter, and you watch it go in there. When you go to dispense, you're going to push down to the first stop, obviously, to put out that measure, but this is the only time you floor it, and it gives it a little push of air to get the rest of it out. Okay? Where do students make mistakes? They floor, it when they floor it at the beginning. They get nervous, okay, and they go, okay, and well, then I when see. they go into the solution, they are sucking up unmeasured and measured. Okay? What can happen? You take up too much, then you don't have enough for the next part of the lab. You go, oh, I did it right. I'm, no, you didn't, okay? So it's really easy to tell when you screw up, okay? So you wanna be careful on that, or you suck up an air bubble, or when you go to dispense it, because you didn't do it correctly, you're like, there's not enough in here. And I'll go, okay. And so you need to always double check your amount. So that's the first stop and the second stop, okay? Now, um, when, um, why don't I have blue? Go ahead and explain this slide right here. Go ahead, blue. Now, as you progress through the lab, like today, everything is colored, right? But in the real lab, everything will look like water. Okay? And you won't be able to go, is it in there? Unless you actually see it go in there. So the best micro, unless I tell you otherwise, sometimes I want you to put your drop right into the solution, but really what you want to do is when you make your drop, put it right on the inside of the tube, the very bottom, so you can see the drop get dispensed in there. So you can go, okay, I put it in there. Because if you just go to put it into the solution, it may be part of a larger volume that's in there and you won't know it's there, okay? You can always, I have microcentrifuges. Did you use those last year? I have a microcentrifuge for each. Every two teams has a microcentrifuge. I actually have four of them over at Chevalier. I can get one to you. Every table has one. And so um, you want to, you want to, you can spin your tubes down to make sure all your drops go to the bottom. Okay? All right. Now, um, transferring fluids, I know you know how to do that, so I'm going to, um, re, uh, who just went blue? Yeah. Okay, so Slate, this is yours. Go ahead. Model it with your hand while you're talking. And then you push the first side all the way down. And then you put the tip of the 
Oh, it's halfway, sorry. Halfway. You put the tip in the liquid, and then you release the plunger, and it keeps going in, whatever, suspend some fluid, push it all the way down, and then remove the tip from the before you sing the plunger. Okay? So, what do I need to do here that I haven't done yet? Put on a tip. That is the rule. Never dip without a fresh tip. Okay? That is your rule. Never dip without a fresh tip. Okay? And what I you tend to do when I put on um, a, a tip. Oh. Um, when I put on a tip, what I tend to do is I do this. I put it on there. I usually put it on firm so I know it's on there. But you can go like this. It shouldn't be wiggly. It shouldn't be wiggly. Okay? Now, this is where... Speak with authority to your bio buddies, okay? No man's an island. You make sure, go, did you put on a fresh tip? And you don't be like, of course I did, okay? It's okay, they're double checking because we don't want any screw ups, right? First stop, you don't have to go, oh, only go halfway. It's not only go halfway, you go till you first fill that stop, that resistance. Go in, right? Whoa, slowly suck it up. Go out, whenever you're gonna dispense it, watch it, poof, and then put it in. The only time I don't floor it usually is when I'm going into a gel. And the reason why is sometimes it puts a little air bubble in the gel and then that air bubble pushes the solution up and out of the well hole. So I usually just go to the first stop in gels and then come right out so I don't, okay? You know what I mean, okay? Your equipment, I went over that before. You have your lab books, you have your digital lab book. That's the power supply. You have your tip box, you all know that. That's to pick up your solution for your gel, um, your trash, and then your block. And you need to empty your trash each time when you're done. Everybody knows to eject a tip right here on the side. And what I have seen done actually more times than I care to um, tell you about is I have seen people they have their solution, they're going into the gel. And what I do with the gel is I like to use the crane method where I put two elbows on the lab bench and then this one supports this hand. Because sometimes our people are like, and <laughs> 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 they stab the gel, okay? So you, this is a real good way to support is with the crane method. And I have seen people, they go and their hand slips off and they go, and then they, this thing's like, in the gel and then they're like <laughs> now best thing to do when you make a mistake is actually to come to me okay and let me try to resolve it because sometimes people come up with their own just assume whatever mistake you're gonna make I've done it ten times and worse okay so um, I'm not gonna judge you unless you're like nah, I'm gonna do something stupid <laughs> then I will judge you okay but um, Assume I, I, I'll come over and I, and I will help you with that, okay? So just want to remind you of that. Okay, so um, I want you to practice making your drops today. And it, you'll put your names, okay? And in your stock box, okay? In your stock box, there are tubes labeled one, two, three. That's for the gel. One, two, three goes in the gel. You're making your drops the same color as your pin that you wrote on there with this, this red color only, okay? And just like I would do it, I would make a 20 drop, I would start big and then go a little. You have two micro pipettes, try them both out, and don't have one person sit there and make all their drops. You should have people waiting in the wings, like I've got it, and while I'm making my 20 microliter drop, she's getting another set one set on the other one and she's ready to go, and then I hand it, so it should be like, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, ba -doo, until you have all your drops done. When now you have all your drops done, show me. Okay, and I can look at that. Okay, then, um, yeah, so you're making those drops. And you don't need to draw it in your lab notebook because you're varsity and I know you're gonna do it correctly, but if this were honors, you would be drawing this right now. Okay, um, remember when you load um, the solutions into the well holes, um, they're gonna be drawn across, and which ones move the fastest? The smallest. 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 And that pertains to the die as well, but I will tell you this. You could have a very large dye pigment, but because it has so many negative charges, it's like a big person that knows how to move, okay? <laughs> and it will move faster through that because of all those negative charges, it draws it through to the positive side. Does that make sense? 
than an equally sized one that doesn't have as many negative charges on it. All right, um, as far as our mini one goes, um, um, you have already done this, worked with the mini one before, so I'm not gonna show you the how-to on the mini one, but I'll, I'll give you a demo um, just that I set up real quick. Um, you're gonna load your three different dye solutions in and you're gonna load 10 microliters. And you have six well holes, okay? So you can load it more than once, but load it like this, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, that's how you wanna load it, one, two, three, one, two, three, because you have six well holes. So you should each be able to load into the gel at least one time, and some of you, I would take the person who did the worst job and have them go again, you know? <laughs> and so that they practice, okay? Because there's six well holes for, for you to fill. Okay. Um, and then, um, so I already told you that, one, two, three, and then let's watch this. I just, uh, I just shot this with my um, phone, so it's not super awesome, but I think you'll get it. When you put the tank in, there's only one way it can go in. I want you to look to see that your disc that you put in right here is on the far side away from the positive, okay? Then when you bring in the gel, you can see the well holes. You want to make sure they're open to you and line those up with the gray disc here. It goes right in here. Do you think and that's you important? Just pour the solution over the top. You're going to load on this side and the DNA or dyes will run towards the positive. You want the solution to barely cover. You can turn on the light so you can see the well holes. And that's it. Okay, do you understand what I just said there? Okay, I have seen people load the gelatin in and not pour the solution on. The solution has to be on here and covering it before you load with the micropipette. So what you'll do is you will take out back here, okay? You're going to, you're hardening this right now. So you'll gently take out the comb. If you wiggle it or go like this, it'll tear and you won't have even well holes. So when you take out the comb, go and pull it straight up, okay? Then you're gonna pull it out and out of here and there'll be slime underneath it and on the side. Wipe that off so you just have your clean square. If you tip it sideways, that will slide right off. There's nothing gating to hold it on there. So be careful when you pull it out and clean it. And then you're gonna put it right down here. You're not taking it off this plastic. You're leaving it on the plastic. And then these well holes will line up with these well holes here, right? And then you're gonna pour the solution over the top and then they're gonna run. This is after you make your dots, okay? And then, um, um, from the side, you can see how it's going in here. You'll turn the light on, okay? You're loading it in here. Do not puncture all the way through. Don't go jabbing. You wanna make sure you're just in the well hole. And you know what? You can kind of feel it a little bit. If you take the tip, you can kind of feel a little bit of resistance to know that you're in the well hole before you start to dispense it in there. Okay, and then after it runs, okay, what you're gonna do is um, you would look for the banding colors here and that's gonna you need to see that banding color in order to answer your Google form on on what what happens okay so you need to see that and then you want to think about this question this would be something I would ask on a quiz or a test okay? and there's that and I think that's it okay so we'll go ahead and get started and hope you're having a good day <laughs>